yum 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 Welcome to the Sprout on Duckworth Street West in downtown St. John's. The restaurant with the green name and the green menu. Vegetarian, that is, but hey, non-vegetarians love to come here and eat as well because the food is just so darn good. Everybody comes to the Sprout, including yours truly. Hello, I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. Steve, this is our first vegetarian show. It's and the reason we're doing a vegetarian show today is because our special guest is vegan and celiac. Indeed he is, that's Greg Malone. And uh, I certainly met the challenge. I made a wonderful uh, vegetarian kebab uh, with some tofu on it and marinated it and uh, served that with a nice lentil salad. And by the way, folks, Steve actually got to go on a trip with me finally. We went to the Boston Seafood Show. One of the largest seafood shows in the world. And I he did some demonstrations down there. Cook some mussels with a little bit of beer and... Uh, and you're gonna find out all about that. Now, let's talk about Julia Bloomquist's wonderful vegetarian menu here today. I have, as my starter, a samurai salad, which features marinated tofu, also rice noodles, some red bell pepper, julienne carrots, toasted sesame seeds, and it's all done in a beautiful ginger tamari dressing. And I have a wonderful signature Blue Moon salad with some blue cheese, we've got some toasted uh, almonds and uh, walnuts and uh, apples as well. Well, uh, we've got some wine here, they have a liquor license as well, and some beautiful uh, homemade molasses bread and hummus. So let's get our vegetarian adventure on the road! People are always asking me how much they should tip, and really, uh, the conventional wisdom these days is 20% of the bill. But I say, if you didn't get good service, or if there was a, it was a bad experience, feel free to tip less. Yeah, whether it be the food or the service, you're right. Our guest in the kitchen today is a legendary Newfoundland and Labrador performer. He is co-founder of CODCO, a multiple Gemini award winner. And how many people can say that, <laughs> literally? <laughs> and he's also just published his memoir. It's called You Better Watch Out. It's an amazing read and beautifully written. Greg Malone is hey, our guest girl. today. <laughs> nice to have you with us. Nice to see you. <laughs> Steve, nice to see you. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Now, uh, Greg, uh, you're vegan. So this, I'm po vegan. this posed a challenge yeah. for our meat eating friend here. Why don't you just you explain think? to us what's the difference between a vegan and a vegetarian? Well, uh, th this is, uh, I learned after I became one, uh, but apparently a vegan or vegan, whatever you want to say, yep. Uh, yep. they don't eat any uh, dairy or eggs or any animal products at all. Whereas mm -hmm. a vegetarian might choose to eat eggs or milk or a few things like that. Even I know vegetarians who eat fish. I <laughs> uh, don't know any who eat chicken, even though they call <laughs> yeah. it the fast-moving vegetable, but they don't eat that. So a vegan eats no animal. And on top of that, you're yeah. also a celiac as well, with no wheat products. I know wheat products because wheat kills me. So well, I have the meal for you now. I, I had no idea we were posing such a challenge. Uh, such restrictions. I welcome the challenge. I welcome the challenge. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. So what I'm going to make, uh, Greg, I'm going to make a beautiful uh, vegetable kebab. I'm going to be putting some uh, zucchini. I'm yeah. going to be putting some eggplant and nice. some peppers on it. Mm. I've got a couple made there already, so I'm yeah. just going to bring them over. I'm going to make another one there. Okay. And. Uh, I was going through uh, one of Carl's cupboards, and I've got these beautiful oh. uh, kebabs. Oh, look and at that! And if you smell them, they're um, they've got thyme on them and garlic. They're already marinated. Not, so. Not creosote. No creosote. <laughs> no, they're, they're they look like green. green. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he's right. They're good. Green. I like them. Yeah. Yeah, they're good. So all I'm going to do is it's very okay. simple. Yeah, I'm just yeah. going to formulate them this way, and I, I'm also going to be putting some. Oh, you're well. getting, you're having all the fun. Look, it's very So, th this is obviously the firm tofu because there's different consistencies yeah. of tofu. Yeah, Ab exactly. And it'll mark it on the package as well that it is, yeah. it's the firm tofu. Yeah, that's right. So. And, and tofu is big in the diet. We you use it in a thousand different ways for everything. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and this is a, another use of it. It's good too. Excellent. I've also put some mushrooms on there. As mushrooms, well. love them. It's very, very good. And another piece of tofu there. And away we go. Um, they're not the local magic mushrooms, though. They're just the regular. <laughs> no, no, no. We've already <laughs> right. went through that. Went through that. <laughs> it was only Carl's cupboard, so. <laughs> so I'm pop. surprised, Carl. <laughs> so, uh, Greg, this is quite different from the diet uh, you were eating when you were a kid. Uh, I should uh, say uh, that your book deals with 
Um, a lot of people might assume that your book is about your CODCO years and, and your years as an actor. Yeah. But in fact, it's from the time, well, before you were born, really, yeah, up yeah. until you were in high school. Up until just grade nine, that's right. And, and there's yeah. a lot of famous people in it. Well, Andy Jones and Kathy Jones are in it because I knew Andy from grade one. <laughs> Danny Williams I knew from grade two. And we were in school in grade 11. So all these people are in the book, but they're all children, just little kids. Running, so yeah. <laughs> you'll get a chance to see them in another vein. Well, exactly. So for the marinade, but, I'm just going to put a little bit of mustard over there. Dry okay, mustard. yeah. We'll so put a little bit of olive oil. Oh, yeah. Love I that. see, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, just, so, and then I'll also put, uh, I believe, your favorite, a little bit of maple lovely. syrup. Lovely. Although mm. the cost has gone up a little oh bit. Oh, my on God. That now. Who can afford to use it now, Steve? <laughs> I, know, what? I know. But we will. Yeah, that's and nice. A touch of low sodium. Perfect. Soya sauce on there as well. Uh, there she's starting to look good there now. Yeah, and the yeah. smell and the aroma is yeah. quite nice. Lovely. Yeah. And a touch of red wine vinegar to bring some acidity mm. through it. Yeah. Mm. I'm just going to put my thumb over the top so I don't put too much on there. Okay. Like so. Looks good. Maybe and we should be turning those around to get them yeah, coated. Yeah, right yeah. Feel yeah. free. This is not what I was eating on Mount Royal Avenue, uh, <laughs> no. Carol, nor no, you. Uh, there, were, there were a lot of uh, and lot I of went to Wells Grocery more than once, but I didn't see any of, of the... <laughs> That's right. My dad had a, a grocery store at the top of Mount Royal and Gulf, right yeah. in your neighborhood. Uh, but in your book, you talked a lot about... Um, oh. Drinking Ooh. Starlack milk. Yes. People of a certain age will remember we'll that. Remember that. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. a powdered milk. Oh, yeah. And it was god awful. That was a dark day when that came on the street. <laughs> That's right, it was yeah. a dark day. Potted meat sandwiches. Oh, my all time I, I worst. Don't need, I don't even know if you can even buy potted meat anymore. I left them in the, in the lunch bag, you know? <laughs> That's but right. uh, I, I came from a family of four boys, so I learned early on if you want to eat, you must cook. That's <laughs> you right. Of, so we made toast first, and then we yeah. started making scrambled eggs. And, and all you the went from there. Yeah, went from there. Yeah. And, and so at, at one point, I think you made uh, breakfast for your mom on Mother's Day? Oh, yeah, yeah, we'd make breakfast. And Dad would cook on, on Mother's Day. And oh, stuff okay. Like that. He'd make yeah. bread and stuff because he yeah. used to be a baker and he'd make all these yeah. fancy rolls. And he thought that was yeah. the best when Dad cooked. <laughs> I bet, uh, yeah, I bet he was a dab hand uh, with the uh, bread oven. Yeah. yeah, he liked to eat too. Yeah. Okay, Carl, you're in charge of the brochettes there. The Look at that, it looks so colorful. Mm -hmm. And now we're going like to be it. making a very simple uh, Turkish lentil salad. Lovely. Now these have already been blanched, but yeah. what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop them in the microwave for about 30 uh, okay. seconds, okay. just to, so they'll start to absorb all the flavors afterwards. I love Mediterranean food. I love lentils. I eat a lot mm. of them. Yeah. And you know they're really good. They scrub the cholesterol out of your system. Right? Clean lentils, your they clean. Okay. They're great. Great food. The nice thing too is you can use a lot of different spices and herbs yes. with uh, lentils, you know? Yeah, you can make a lot of things yeah. out of it, yeah. It's like tofu, it kind of takes on the flavor of whatever it's mixed with. Yes, yeah, it does. And uh, We're actually getting a bit of color on those. They're actually brown. I really yeah. like this grill that you've got here, Carl. A nice electric one, you can cook it inside. And I yeah. also see you put some water in there. That'll just absorb all That's the That's right, exactly. Yeah, things. cuts that, down yeah. on the, uh, the smoke. The smoke. Clever. Of course, we can't turn the vent on because it makes too much noise. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, Danny Williams, Premier Danny Williams, Premier, went yes. to school with you. Yes, he was an actor. So, what, what was Danny Williams like when he was eight years old? <laughs> well, you'll have to read the book for that. <laughs> well, that's right. <laughs> but there are Random stories. House, <laughs> Random House, by the way, it's available at leading bookstores. Yes, yeah, uh, there it is. I, uh, I, had a, um, uh, I had a couple of stories in about Danny. Yeah. So, uh, and whenever I had a story in about people, whether it was my teacher, like Brother Rogers, yeah. or people like that, I tried to send them this, at least that part of the book, the story, to say, look, you know, yeah. don't be too surprised when you're That's suddenly right. yeah. people are saying, talking to you about your grade four class, because yeah. so, <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking yeah. about it. Yeah. So everyone was all right with it, thank yeah. God. Yeah. So we'll start to make the salad now, Greg. So okay. We'll, we'll put a little bit of cayenne if you want to start mixing okay, it. Okay, a little cayenne. A little cayenne. And some Very good. Cumin. Love cayenne. Love the hot stuff. Boy, that, that, that's a cumin. lot of cayenne you put in there, We have to spice well, it up. <laughs> you know, I, I have uh, cayenne and, and garlic, fresh garlic on my breakfast in the morning. So Really? I do. I have rice cereal with Some garlic. Oh, different. you can't have enough parsley. Yep. Cayenne parsley, on your breakfast, wow. Parsley is, a, they use it a lot in the Mediterranean, don't yeah. they? Everything. Hey, the Both for color and for flavor. And, and for said. flavor. Parsley, you know, Green that's... Onions. The parsley is in those breath assure things, hey? That's the, right. The parsley yeah. seed oil that cleans out your stomach and freshens your breath. Yeah, so it's, um, that's right. I just yeah. eat it raw and it's great. Of course, um, unless you get the green stuff in your teeth after the <laughs> yeah. so good. And my breath is Just like broccoli. Up. I look like hell, yeah. There we go. Oh, that's lovely. Look at that. Beautiful. We'll just add a touch of olive oil in there yes, as well. Yes, always olive oil, hey? So you were telling me, Greg, you like uh, to eat honey as well. I do. I love honey. 
and um, I, I eat a lot of it. <laughs> Some people think there are like, Some special white, white health benefits to uh, honey. Uh, I think there are. Uh, well, you know, you see all these cures for apple cider vinegar mm. and honey all the time, and, and uh, so I eat quantities of both. Mm -hmm. And uh, I swear by it. Mm. Honey is. Uh, and I'll just squeeze some lemon juice in there now. Honey is good for your stomach. It's got all kinds of minerals and vitamins in it. And if you don't mm. cook the honey, if you eat it raw, it's not like sugar. It doesn't go right into your blood. It digests, and it's it's good for you mm -hmm. as opposed to you know being too sweet. And you can buy Newfoundland honey. Now. Oh, it's lovely There's a too. Company here doing uh, yep. Newfoundland honey and some delicious, delicious flavors. Mm. That smells beautiful. Oh, this How smells delicious. Mm. It's the lemon that starts to bring Sound everything out, growth. doesn't it? Hey, yeah. Now we're going to counteract that bit. now with a little bit of fresh mint as well. To go in there, so. I'm getting hungry here, Steve. Yeah, yeah. we're starting to, uh, you know, <laughs> act on the pheromonal <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> yeah. system here. Yeah, that uh, fresh mint. I'm sorry, really. what is this? Oh, this fresh mint, mint, fresh mint, mint yeah. of course, yeah. You know, you don't think of putting mint in, but it's great, isn't oh, it, in some things, like, especially Mediterranean. So. Absolutely. I, like, I enjoy cooking potatoes in it. Are you really? And, uh, like, boiling potatoes. Yeah. It really draws the flavor through it. Really? Greg, uh, uh, one thing that amazed me about your book was the, the detail of your memory. I mean, I, 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 you, you know, uh, it jogged my memory because, yeah. you know, we grew up in the same neighborhood and stuff, but... Uh, I would never have been able to remember stories in the detail in which you remembered them. Yeah. Well, I know. It's a, well, you wrote me an email about it, and I thought, my gee, Carl should write his own book. You were going on and on. I thought, you got into the book, didn't you, no, too? <laughs> no, I don't have your memory. But, you know, after I picked away, well, some stories, see, I've been telling to people for years. Yes. And so it had a sort of an oral tradition. That's and so right. then I yeah. write down eventually yeah. the, the, exactly. the printed version of it. Yeah. And other stuff, I find that if you kind of pick away at a memory for all day, and I'm trying to remember it all, next day kind of other doors open up mm. and you think, oh yeah, I remember that, that, that. And that's right. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That is the way it works, exactly. But it, Something it, triggers another memory yeah. and that triggers something yeah. else. Yeah, and stuff that... I don't want to waste his parsley. We'll put don't it all waste in. the parsley. No, we'll eat it all. <laughs> Uh, we got a good crew here. <laughs> uh, but so memory is a funny thing, though. It, so you know, you can be wrong about stuff. So can we look forward to a book at some point about your, you know, your career? Well, I left it open-ended at the end, like I left yeah. it as a bit of a cliffhanger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that uh, it's open to that possibility. That's but uh, it's, it, I don't know. I, I mean, I. I think your writing is just amazing. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Amazing writer and uh, so I enjoyed writing it so too, descriptive right? and entertaining. Yeah. Even with the some of the stories were quite horrendous actually. Yeah, quite challenging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Referring to the s school stories. Still challenging at the time and <laughs> yeah. still challenging. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, you still made, managed to make them really entertaining. I mean, it was a riveting book, really. Oh, good. Anyway, good, good. Uh, I'm so glad you liked it. Uh, so really we'll we'll have to look forward to a sequel at some point. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Steve, are we done with the... Uh, well, the salad's beautifully made there, beautiful. and the smell yeah. through there is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And, gorgeous. and these uh, look and like they've uh, browned up really nicely. Yeah. So I think... Oh, I and think I think what has done that, I think that's the uh, the maple syrup coming through it as well. Yeah. It's been a really nice caramelization. Yeah, yeah, it, so. yeah, yeah. I think uh, at this point, I'm going to excuse myself because I'm going to pick out a nice wine to go with this bacon meal. Okay? Perfect. I'll, I'll be back. I'll trust your expert taste. Yeah. Taste, yeah. yeah. Hi, Andrea. Hey, Carl. How are you? Excellent. How are you? Well, that necklace, I've seen that before. Have you really? Uh, yeah, I have. Where? Jeremy, uh, Jane, Jeremy Bonia's sister Jane actually is a jeweler, and she made this for me. Jeremy? That's where I've seen it. I saw Jeremy wearing that necklace. What? This one? Yeah, that one. Because uh, the driftwood, it's the same driftwood, exactly the same necklace. So Jeremy's wearing my jewelry? Uh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Okay. That's rather well, interesting. interesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, anyway, um, we have Greg Malone upstairs. Oh, fabulous! And uh, Greg uh, is a uh, vegan, so uh, but he has the odd glass of wine. So I guess this is not a, not a really an issue with wine, is it? Uh, well, generally it's not, uh, and most of the we time there really we isn't. We don't put meat products in wine. Well, generally there's no steak or anything in there, but there actually could be. When wine is fine, when it's clarified to get rid of the sediment, there are different things that vintners will use to do that. Usually it's a clay, but it could actually be an egg white type product, or it could actually be uh, something that comes from fish. So, and most of the time there really isn't a way to know whether wines, uh, you'd have That's to talk to the to people who made the wine in order That's to find that. That's very interesting. Yeah. 
But anyway, I guess we don't have to worry about that with these wines. No, um, we don't. So we've got uh, tofu grilled with vegetables. It's got some maple syrup in it. We've got a lentil salad. What do you think? Well, we need something that, I think white, first mm -hmm. of all, and we need something that's got a little bit of residual sugar. You've got a lot going on in the dish with the sweetness of the maple syrup, the spices, sort of uh, Moroccan style spices that are in the, uh, the lentil salad. So we have three nice choices here. This is from the Alsace region of France, so very close to the German border. It's uh, a beautiful Gewürztraminer, which actually means spicy berry Gewürztraminer. So you can imagine that that would go really beautifully. It's got residual sugar, but enough um, acidity that is going to be nicely balanced. This one is the Clay Station Viognier, which is from California. Mm. Viognier is a big, floral, fruity, lovely, right. great, very peachy. Again, a little residual sugar, but still a nice balance. Mm -hmm. And this one is on order at the liquor store. It's going to be in uh, very, very shortly. It is listed on the NLC site, though. Clos de Penel from Spain. Uh, white Grenache. A uh, couple of other Spanish grapes in there, some residual sugar in this one as well. Absolutely beautiful. So any of them would be a great choice for the dish. Mm. Okay. Uh, I'm a big fan of Gewürztraminer. So uh, I kind of like that little bit of sweetness mm -hmm. it has, you know? Yeah. Um, and somehow I think this might be the one. I think what it do you would be think? beautiful. Yep. There's uh, a little bit of rose going on in that one as well, yeah. and the tropical gonna, fruit. I think I'm it's gorgeous. I'm going to try the Gewürztraminer. I think you'll enjoy and, it. And, uh, you know, I was just thinking about Jeremy. Uh, how much is this, by the way? That one is uh, 13 I believe. Okay, that's not a bad price. Um, Jeremy, yeah. I wonder if he was uh, auditioning for Codco or something. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'll uh, definitely have to Jeremy, ask Jeremy about that. He looks like an address. <laughs> See you, Carl. This looks good, Steve. Yeah, and I see Carl's got a picture of you there oh, with the... Oh, look at that. He's pretty hey. free with them Oscars, isn't he? He is My goodness. Yes, yeah. we presented you with <laughs> our first, Oscar. My first Oscar, Carl. This, this is actually... Congratulations. Thank this you. is actually an Oscar for your book. Ah, uh, Because you, you go. got the Gemini's for your acting and everything, so... Well, I wrote the book, and now I'm getting to eat. This is yeah. <laughs> and boy, this looks really uh, wonderful. It looks excellent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got it. It looks that. Uh, Moroccan. Moroccan. <laughs> I'm really pleased with the way it turned yeah. out because we oh, yeah. kept the challenge and we met the challenge. It is. You pour it's up the wine here. This is a Gewürztraminer, uh, which Andrea says will go very nicely with the Moroccan spices. Oh, you've that's beautiful. Incorporated okay. yeah. into this dish. So, Greg, uh, dig in. And let us okay. know yeah. what you think, because, okay. as I say, this was quite a challenge for mm. Steve. It passes the looks test. It mm. looks attractive. Yeah, it does. Very good. Mm. Very good, yeah. Mm. Mm. taste of cumin coming through. I love the salad. And uh, like mm. you was uh, mentioning, mm. you get all the ingredients here in town. We got all our ingredients actually from Coleman's in Mount Pearl. Yeah, yeah. 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 For this yeah, this is excellent. Yeah. So is this something that maybe you'd uh, mm. make for yourself? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Thank you. Well, we're going to certainly make the recipe available to everybody. Good. And you're going to give us a recipe. Uh, tell us about the recipe that you're going to give us. My uh, recipe is um, for a Thai peanut sauce. Now, it's my version of a Thai mm -hmm. peanut sauce. Perfect. Okay. Uh, but the kids love it. <laughs> <laughs> and I have it over yeah. uh, rice noodles. Okay, yeah. That's all. And with some... Um, some greens or fried tofu on the side. That's all. Perfect. Yeah. So for somebody who's celiac uh, these days, I guess it's a lot easier because you do have rice pasta. It is. It is. Yeah. It is. And you know, I, in Italy apparently they're using a lot of rice pasta now because mm -hmm. a lot of people have celiac in Italy too. I didn't realize, but mm -hmm. apparently you can get rice pasta a lot easier in in, in Italy, which yeah. is which is great. Perfect. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it is easier around here too. Even. Yeah. yeah. Good. Uh, just one last plug for your book. Mm. Uh, the book is from Random House. It's called You Better Watch Out. A uh, lovely picture of Greg there on the front uh, <laughs> from grade four, and there's a picture of his mom and dad, and it's available at fine bookstores everywhere. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Carl. For more of Chef Steve Watson's recipes, our recommended wine lists, and guest recipes, log on to centraldairies.com. Have a recipe that you want to share with us? Send it along to onechef.onecritic at rci.rogers.com. Be sure to attach your name, address, and contact number, and you and a guest could be eligible to win a dinner for two at one of our city's finest restaurants. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600. If you're making cookies or muffins, try adding a little cooked lentils to your batter, and that will add not only flavor, but nutritional value. And it uses uh, a very uh, underutilized ingredient, lentils. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, Steve, Julia Bloomquist has prepared some beautiful desserts for us. I have my favorite nut is on this dessert. I'm excited. Cashew nuts, um, a banana cake with a caramel topping. What do you I, have? I have an amazing citrus pie here with an almond and chocolate uh, crust on it. Okay, but before we can talk into these, we have to tell folks that we're going to the Boston Seafood Show. We're going to show you what Steve was doing down there and show you a whole bunch of things, actually, and you'll learn some really interesting stuff. And now I'm going to talk into this dessert. Uh, me too. It's the land of the free, home of the brave, the U.S. of A, and Boston, Massachusetts. This is Boston's Quincy Market area, site of historic Fannel Hall and Union Oyster House. We're here for the famous Boston Seafood Show. Because Steve will be cooking Newfoundland seafood at the show, he needs to shop for last minute ingredients. I think he's got just about what he needs, so it's off to the show. Steve, here we are. We're in Boston, site of the great Boston International Seafood Show. How does it feel to be in one of the most historic cities in America? Actually fantastic, Cal. It's not just known for the seafood show, but for its food as well. The restaurants are such a good. And how did you make that at the market? Did you get everything you were looking for? I did, Carl, and I can't wait to get into the show now and start cooking up a store. Okay. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see what you're going to cook. Absolutely. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, Carl. Inside the massive Boston Convention and Exhibition Center, there are literally hundreds of pavilions and booths from a multitude of fishing nations. The United States, Japan, Chile, Ireland, to name just a few. Then there's Atlantic Canada and the Newfoundland and Labrador Pavilion. Our delegates are busily arranging a magnificent display of Newfoundland seafood products. Steve Watson's just cooked up some of our blue mussels for the audience. For you, mussels? I'm to share. Okay, no problem. It's time for me to take a spin round the convention center to see what other seafood delicacies are here. Whew, and I still didn't see it all. I wonder how Steve's doing. First, I'll ask Mun Aquaculture researcher, Sir Couturier, how things have been going at the Canadian Aquaculture booth. We found it very, very, uh, very interesting, but also very useful to, under, to know that people are really interested in Canadian farm products and Newfoundland farm products, you know, as well. I mean, we produce some very, very nice products. They, they recognize a Canadian brand, even though we don't have a brand as being a safe, wholesome product, environmentally sustainable, and I think that's one of the things that's really come through to me today. So. Uh, um, I think it's, it's good, and the flavor is, is there as well, and the people just love the flavor of our products. So, Steve, uh, how have you been doing? You haven't cut your fingers uh, or anything today. Well, Cal, not today, but I tell you, I've been shopping a lot of oysters, I've been shopping a lot of sable fish, some mussels, and people are just enjoying it, just like me at the Boston Seafood Show. <laughs> Newfoundland Aquaculture does $63 million worth of business annually. Our provincial seafood industry tallies $1 billion worth of business every year. And, as you've heard, it seems like there's lots of interest in Canadian seafood this year. I'm Carl Wells at the Boston Seafood Show for One Chef, One Critic. Well, Steve, for a couple of carnivores, we didn't have any trouble polishing off that vegetarian meal. I think we converted, <laughs> Carl. I think we have. <laughs> Anyway, we had a great show. Greg Malone was terrific. The trip to Boston was Amazing. perfect. Anyway, we hope you've enjoyed our program today, folks. Join us again next week for another edition of... One Chef. One Critic. Well, our guest in the kitchen today is a legendary Newfoundland and Labrador performer. He is a co-founder of Codco, a multiple award-winning... Uh, multiple personality person <laughs> a multiple Gemini multiple Gemini award winner that's right multiple Gemini <laughs> don't ask me girl <laughs> well our guest in the kitchen today is a fantastic person <laughs> <laughs> Well, our guest in the kitchen today is Greg Malone. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> I'll hold a cue cards next time. Oh my God.